now we come to financial plan and this lecture will look into whatever that has been planned for marketing for operational for admin and organizational plans to come together to be now made into financial plan and together all four again i want to emphasize that they make the business plan So a little bit of introduction about financial plan uh, or financial budget basically you know all those lectures i already given to you in terms of uh, marketing production or operation and administration uh, planning uh, there there is also making the budget for all these uh, uh, entities and these budgets will then be brought to financial planning where it can make the final uh, budget and this financial budget comes in the form of uh, what is called pro forma financial statement. Uh, they call it pro forma simply because it's a projection or a presumption. Uh, it is different from the actual financial statement. Okay? When you start the company, uh, that is called financial statement. And financial statement still has cash flow uh, income statement and also balance sheet but for pro forma uh, which is a financial plan it is to prepare uh, before actually doing the business therefore they call it a uh, pro forma financial statement where the um, within it there is pro forma cash flow pro forma income statement as well as pro forma balance sheet so why is it important to have this uh, financial plan uh, instead of just you know starting the company without such a financial plan the important is to determine the size of investment you know uh, you are going into something uh, how big is the planning how big is the company are you uh, being too ambitious uh? are you being uh, over cautious uh? so uh, by having this financial plan then you know uh, all the amounts to be spent uh, how much to not go overboard how to stay within the plan uh, strategy uh, so that's depending uh, the need for or the importance of financial plan so the size of investment will will be already known before actually embarking on it and if it turns out that you have an intention of how big your company is going to be and if there is a, you know a budget then you can see what to do is it that you need to get a support in terms of uh, finance whether the money that you already have in hand and also help from uh, family members is sufficient maybe you want to open a slightly bigger than uh, a bigger company in terms of magnitude or size therefore you done the business planning uh, this uh, financial plan then you know uh, how much to go and get help other than what you have already in your hand uh, maybe you can get it from banks from government support uh, or other uh, source of uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, share uh, to sell your equity uh, those kind of thing so uh, it is uh, ensuring that the initial capital is sufficient if it's not sufficient uh, where to get the support financial support okay and then also to analyze the viability apart from money how much of money needed can also uh, see whether it can go through uh, uh, how long you want to have uh, you know uh, uh, support like two months 
four months before you actually make profit to self-sustain. Uh, so that's the meaning of this financial uh, planning. And then by having all this uh, uh, cash flow, uh, balance sheet, uh, this uh, what you call income uh, statement, you can just look at it and then know, okay, uh, asset, how much of money is there? Uh, uh, liabilities, how much of money do I need to spend? Don't go overboard. Uh, that means breakdown for each of the um, spending and also income uh, that is supposed to be achieved. This is the uh, developing uh, steps for financial plan and looks like there are seven steps. We are going to go one at a time until uh, we understand in detail about each step. So the step one I already covered earlier, that means uh, gathering the financial input. So you could have uh, told your marketing side, uh, admin side, operation side, the managers to come up with their uh, budget and then also forecast, uh, especially marketing. Uh, what is the monthly or annual uh, sales forecast? Because this is very important for the financial planning. Therefore, all uh, should come together and actually uh, achieve their part and then give it to the financial planner to complete the next uh, step. So you can see how this uh, diagram shows the input coming from uh, marketing, organizational uh, and also admin uh, coming up with their budget and also for sales for forecast and operation budget as well. Uh, if you ask me, the uh, most amount of money uh, will be concentrated in operational plan if it is a manufacturing or production uh, company. Uh, if it's service, then uh, the other uh, two components may carry more weightage than uh, operational plan. And then once uh, these inputs come in, then starts the following steps of a financial plan. That is, uh, next step is project implementation costs. So now we look at the other step that is uh, after getting all the inputs coming from various departments. Now we put that information to determine the implementation, implementation costs. You want to know how much money is actually required to uh, you know, start off the business and for how long to actually survive uh, before uh, selling, uh, before getting profit to be self-sustained. Uh, uh, so that's where the implementation cost is uh, to be uh, counted, uh, to be uh, estimated. And this is uh, can be broken down to two long-term expenditure, which is more likely you, uh, you know, need to get it only uh, one time, uh, not like every month or every quarterly you need to get it. So these are all the uh, like, you know, like the plant. Uh, plant means uh, the factory itself, uh, maybe factory for uh, manufacturing. Uh, no need to buy the whole factory, maybe rent it, uh, lease it. And then machinery, equipment, you know, you only get it one time. And then it's for use for uh, years to come until it totally gets spoiled and then you have to replace it. You also need a vehicle, maybe a van or lorry to transport once the good is ready to the retailer and all that comes under long-term expenditure. Then you have short-term expenditure, which, uh, you know, recurs every month, you know, like salary, uh, electricity bill, uh, water bill. Uh, but this one also uh, will not carry so much of a uh, amount to spend, but it is quite a nuisance because every month need to do it. And if you don't plan very well, uh, you could have a deficit, uh, cannot even uh, pay your uh, workers salary uh, because no profit, then it's a huge problem. So here given the uh, components of uh, implementation uh, costing, uh, which uh, input needs to come from 
working capital uh, how much uh, need to be used every month until self sufficient until got profit or even uh, can say uh, start to sell okay and then you also need uh, information uh, or you know uh, to do the costing for capital expenditure uh, also in short they call it capex uh, so the capital expenditure is where you will see all the machineries uh, equipment all these which are uh, fixed asset are uh, found there and then this pre-operational expenses is not so much uh, it's more to you know all the legalities uh, your you know registration uh, licensing uh, all that comes under here maybe consultant uh, lawyer fees and everything comes here and then don't tell me uh, you are so perfect uh, don't worry about anything going wrong uh. Uh, maybe you buy a, you know uh, an equipment you get spoiled uh, need to have uh, extra money for repair so that's where the contingency comes in normally the contingency they look into five to ten percent of the overall uh, implementation cost uh, to be used uh, for estimating conti contingency uh, costing so here given the uh, capex uh, this one all the uh, more of a permanent kind of asset and more like a purchase in the beginning of the business itself. So sometimes uh, first time entrepreneur, they go over ambitious, buy very nice things and then, you know, uh, quite sad after that, uh, they are selling it uh, because uh, company go bankrupt. So better to be a little bit uh, uh, not uh, going overboard, uh, buying all the best things uh, in the first instance. Uh. So uh, building, of course, you need it. Uh, but the question arises, do you need to buy the building itself or uh, look into rental? Uh? So, and then uh, land, uh, don't tell me, I uh, need to buy the land and the building. Uh, maybe it comes together, uh, don't go and waste money to buy the land itself and then put the building on top of it, not to mention it takes a long time. Okay, so equipment, machinery, uh, important, we already discussed in one of the lectures how many you need to calculate uh, to make the work of production, uh, you know, uh, easier. And then all the other things also uh, considered an asset for the company. Then the information about the working capital, uh, you know, every month need to uh, pay the bills uh, and then you must also have cash. Uh, sometimes uh, people don't accept uh, all these uh, credit card or, you know, uh, other means of online banking. Maybe they want cash because, uh, you know, for my own example, when I deal with, say, the indigenous people to buy the Tongkat Ali route, uh, where they believe in all banking. <laughs> so I have to meet them also in a very, uh, uh, you know, close to the forest or uh, to their house. And then I just pay cash. It could be sometimes up to uh, 2000 ringgit like that. Uh, so uh, that's why even in a company, you must have this working capital and example shown there cash huh? and then why uh, holding cash <laughs> uh, motive for holding cash uh, you know sometimes when you think about uh, having cash it's wrong huh? but it needs for all these uh, transaction purposes therefore cash is also required and then uh, inventories uh, just to uh, give information about inventories because later slide also will have inventories inventories is uh, you know, you want to make into, say, my product, uh, Beirut to Ali Capsule, uh, you need to have the raw material. So I need to buy the root. Uh, I need to uh, then have uh, other materials to prepare the raw material, uh, which then I give to the factory. So this raw material is considered uh, inventory. But uh, also want to tell you, after the raw material become capsule, become into bottle, uh, and then package, that also called inventory, the finished good. So uh, from the start of the material ingredient, maybe halfway finish and up to finished good is all considered inventory. 
So another component of uh, implementation cost is the pre-operative expenses. Uh, this is not so much, but it's also necessary because you are not an expert in everything concerning uh, in the formation of a company, uh, formation of a you know plan. So you need to get help. So you need to pay the fees, maybe uh, considered like consultant fees. And then you also need to pay for the registration. So all this uh, is considered pre-operating expenses, but it won't be carrying uh, so much compared to other uh, uh, part of the budget. And then uh, contingency, normally, you know, 5 to 10%, uh, you know, what if uh, suddenly you got, you know, loss of uh, the sales? Uh, uh, you plan for two months, but uh, profit only comes in the fourth month. <laughs> so the third month uh, better have some contingency to, you know, help you to get through that one more month. Okay. And then maybe sometimes uh, unexpected things could happen. Huh? Car breakdown, you buy the second hand uh, when it breaks down, you have to have money to repair. That wasn't even planned earlier or even uh, TAF. So contingency is also looks like very important. So here you can see an example of implementation cost. Uh, looks like uh, all things uh, uh, as we discussed just now. Uh, even have that you know contingency cost of 10 percent and then uh, you have the care packs you can see you know land machinery furniture even a vehicle but it's been paid by higher purchase and then also renovation so all these uh, totaling to 104,000 as i said that will be the big sum that you need to spend but that will be uh, one off one time only and then what about every month need to you know stay uh, you know paying the bills uh, so that comes to 17500 uh, but not so much on the uh, you know uh, pre op uh, looks like uh, quite quite low uh, and then all together, you put together, it's uh, 137,500. So that is the implementation cost for that project or say uh, startup for that company. So uh, once you already know the implementation cost, uh, then you have to like, you know, scratch your head where to get the money. Or do you have already the money? So that's where the step three come. That is to determine the source of the finance. Now, if you have the money, then wow, that's uh, great. But uh, if you don't have that 137,500, then you start to think about uh, where the source of uh, financing. Uh, if you have already the money, then it's called internal source. That means it's from your own pocket or maybe uh, your relative that also considered internal source and then if uh, you know maybe you have partially uh, maybe you have 100000 but what about the 37500 maybe you can get it from external source and this could be you know uh, grants uh, grant that people award uh, like what i had uh, thankfully i had a grant so i start the company i start the production of bioruto ali uh, capsule or you can also get from banks uh, credit companies uh, legitimate credit companies don't get from along <laughs> then you will be in big trouble so this slide is the carry uh, forward from just the last slide i think i already explained where is the source of funding uh, uh, many ways of getting uh, funding you know uh, even the van uh, that you want to buy you can just have a higher purchase, no need to pay for cash, uh, all that you can, but you have to think about it. So for the you know estimate just now, 137,500. So this is an example of uh, where to get the financing for it. Uh, looks like the owner of the uh, company has uh, already has cash in hand, 27,500. And then you also happen to have the land and building 
but a bit, uh, you know, uh, quite low, uh, the value for that uh, land and building. Perhaps this is, uh, you know, a cottage uh, uh, industry, uh, uh, very uh, small business in the maybe Kampong site because the land is so cheap and also the building also all comes to 45,000 ringgit only. Uh, maybe it's a cottage industry. But anyway, uh, then you also look into uh, external sources. Uh, higher purchase uh, that twenty thousand is for the van. the The price of the van is twenty five thousand, uh, five thousand deposit, and then twenty thousand take loan every month must pay. Okay, and then looks like also got a term loan. Term loan means you uh, you know take forty five thousand, maybe for a period of uh, say uh, five years, but uh, you know after uh, the whole thing because of interest. Uh, instead of paying uh, 45,000, you may end up paying like, you know, 85,000 or 65,000 because of the interest put. But it's okay because uh, sometimes doing business is all about uh, credit. So let's look into what is called uh, pro forma or you know, presumption or projected financial uh, statement which uh, includes uh, cash uh, flow, uh, pro forma cash flow, and also uh, later uh, income uh, statement or pro forma income statement, and uh, also balance sheet. Okay. So all also projection. Uh, you, know, you know it's a projection because the actual uh, financial statement will have all the uh, incense, uh, maybe uh, 5,000, uh, 15 ringgit and uh, 25 cent because that is actual achievement but this one is projection so uh, maybe round it up as 5000 ringgit alone for each of the uh, you know like that okay so uh, here given a bit more explanation about the pro forma cash flow uh, looks like it has this cash inflow and the cash inflow is all you know cash at hand uh, what the uh, entrepreneur, uh, you know, uh, sponsor or invest into the company and then uh, if not enough, got loan and then uh, whatever sales already happened, that's cash sale, hopefully uh, to the level of profit. And then uh, collection of receivables uh, referring, you know, sometimes when you sell for one month, uh, you won't get COD. Uh, not you sell 1,000 bottles, you won't get 1,000 uh, uh, times, uh, say 60 ringgit. All they will give you at that moment itself. If they give COD, it's a great thing. But normally in business, it's a bit like credit. Maybe they pay, uh, you know, uh, half of it or quarter of it. Then they say next month I pay the other portion. So that's a normal thing in business. So that's why collection of receivables could be that you know a uh, uh, quarter of it only then the following month 75 percent of uh, will be the collectible collectible uh, or collection of uh, receipts so another part is the cash outflow which uh, makes up the uh, pro forma cash uh, flow statement and for this is all the uh, you know all the expenditures uh, i highlighted you know, marketing operation and administrative expenditure because this is all from the uh, previous lectures where they made the budget. So now you actually, uh, you know, take into account, uh, but you're not spending yet. Uh, it's just still they are planning. You have allocated for marketing department, uh, operation, you know, the plant side, the administrative, uh, uh, their budget, you already taken into account in, in this cash flow uh, for every month. Okay? And then all the others uh, as uh, straightforward, uh, you can uh, read about it. Now here you see an example of a pro forma cash flow statement, which is uh, part of the financial planning, uh, not, not actual, uh, you know, uh, Furniture yet or ex actual uh, cash inflow. Uh, so uh, looks like in the pre-op uh, stage, uh, not yet even January, maybe in uh, late December, they already have uh, all the money in. Uh, 
27,545,000 already in and then uh, uh, it's 72,500 and then look into uh, buying the van uh, so they say okay in December I will pay the deposit uh, for the van booking and then every month I will pay uh, uh, maybe 466 uh, correct <laughs> 333 plus 133 so because you know uh, interest for the van uh, installment so maybe you pay 466 every month for the van uh, so like that so plan it for one year and then all the other things also before january already you know look into machinery allocate it to the site for that purpose furniture renovation and all that okay? and then if you look at it uh, one thing unique uh, unique about cash cash flow statement is you total minus off everything at the end ending cash balance will be 30000 that 30000 will go to the following month in january okay and then you uh, again tabulate everything it is now uh, you can see here this one is 30000 it comes to the following month and then this one 30909 will then come to the beginning cash balance they call it so that's the indicator is the cash flow okay and uh, uh, also uh, since this is a projection uh, they have uh, decided that every month need to achieve sales of uh, 20,000 say 20,000 ringgit so they have to achieve that every month huh? uh, Hopefully, minimum of 20,000, there could be more up to the sales uh, marketing side. So, uh, this is a planning or cash flow for one year. Uh, hopefully, can be having profit or self uh, sustaining after 12 months. So, another example, and for this example, everything is same. Uh, there is also beginning uh, cash balance, you can see there. Uh, but this one is for three years and uh, rightfully they say it's best to plan for three years for either cash flow or income statement or balance sheet so for this one it's already planned for uh, three years the next uh, planning is a pro forma income statement and uh, this will uh, give you an idea whether you are expe expected to have profit or loss but um, you know when you make a plan uh, usually uh, your mind will be thinking about profit uh, and uh, i don't think you will you know make the plan to be having a loss even if there's a loss you will look into strategy to end up with profit so uh, and then a uh, bit of calculation uh, better we see the next slide then you'll understand better the way to minus off so just now cash flow it will give more uh, details on you know more itemized more uh, you know uh, everything uh, given uh, but here group it uh, make it into groups the expenditure also in terms of uh, the sales projected uh, it, it, it won't be uh, inside each of these uh, uh, you know uh, wording there could be more expenditures uh, that's what i meant okay so uh, you can see that this company uh, already projected uh, to have uh, first year 240000 uh, and then uh, expect year 2 to be more and then every year rightfully to think more uh, and then uh, when you pro produce more cost of sales also increases and then you can see they calculated the gross uh, profit after they minus off the cost of sales of the good uh, cost of sales of good and then uh, it also increases so uh, can say a good projection uh, to increase rather than have loss so, and then all other thing of expenses operating income and then finally they can also look into uh, expected uh, profit and looks like also increasing every year and hopefully uh, achieve self-sustaining uh, sustaining. 
and then uh, it is before tax uh, because you don't know uh, you know all decided by the budget reading right or how much of tax for companies so that's why you know they put before tax not after after tax and another uh, component of uh, the financial planning is the uh, pro forma balance sheet uh, uh, balance sheet uh, just include these three things uh, but within inside it got many other accounts in it uh, asset as a whole and then this total asset need to be equal so there's a formula uh, the total asset need to be equal to owner's equity uh, you know what the owner puts in uh, either cash or in giving land or all that uh, and then uh, plus together with uh, liabilities all the expenses so uh, it's called balance sheet because of a reason that is assets total assets uh, equal to owner's equity plus liability uh, we see next slide uh, what it means about this formula but uh, looks like a balance sheet uh, shows the position of the business at a particular time you know and any time you want to know what is the position of your company you can do the balance sheet so uh, when it comes to this uh, balance sheet or pro forma balance sheet uh, this is the uh, formula that i was referring to uh, you have assets equal to owner's equity and liability uh, whatever uh, found here to be total asset you will see that when you uh, put together this and this the total amount will be same as asset uh, that's why they call it balance sheet okay? and then uh, total asset is divided to current and so, so non-current we will see uh, what is the meaning of this current and non-current similarly on uh, total liability what is uh, current liability and non-current liabilities and then you also have uh, total uh, equity uh, that is uh, share capital you know the uh, owner puts in money or he gives the percentage to others to help out in the company and then uh, you know that uh, uh, when the time comes uh, yeah, they won't not only help they will be given dividend when there is profit okay and then uh, this is interesting uh, it's called retained uh, earning don't tell me all the profit the owner uh, or whoever uh, you know uh, invest uh, takes the money uh, some money you do keep in the company for future purposes so that is called uh, return uh, retain earning All right uh, so we just look at uh, you know what's the asset uh, which is called non-current and current and when it comes to uh, non-current uh, first uh, it's all the uh, property plan machinery everything okay uh, but you have to understand uh, some of this example uh, depreciates over time especially equipment machinery and you need to know the uh, depreciation value uh, sometimes when we like you know we buy new car and then the following year you need to take uh, you know insurance so you need to know what is the sum or to be insured so there is a way to calculate according to uh, these uh, insurance adjusters they say uh, every year the car will depreciate by 15 percent to 20 percent uh, no need to go and see uh, actual you know depreciation car value then only take the sum in insured so same thing here every year you must uh, reduce the machinery's uh, uh, value because you want to do this balance sheet every year so also need to know that okay um, and then uh, some actually not depreciate it will become appreciate <laughs> like you know if you own the building uh, buildings are normally appreciate uh, so also must know how much of increase is happening on that value so this is on the current assets uh, looks like all the you know assets which are uh, not like properties uh, not like buildings 
or not like equipment or machinery considered is uh, you know current assets which are cash cash in hand and also inventory uh, remember inventory i explained to you so this is uh, uh, already uh, defined as in the raw materials and then uh, half uh, build up already uh, sometimes in the car manufacturing uh, ready build ready come ready made from another vendor uh, so same thing lah work in process process and then uh, finally finished goods uh, you keep in storage that also inventory you, you don't sell it yet it will start to accumulate so that also inventory okay and uh, receivables is remember i told you uh, you sell not in uh, cod cash on del delivery sometimes the 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 customer will say or oh, uh, you sell to a retailer they will say uh i give you 25 percent of uh, uh, the money first and then the next month i give you 75 percent so this is the receivables it's also uh, part of the uh, current asset and then uh, next part is owner's equity uh, cash or assets plus the accumulated amount of uh, net income okay looks like uh, retained uh, revenue also considered or the whatever equity or the owner puts in uh, into the business is considered uh, owner's equity uh, similarly whatever share uh, been you know sold to uh, people who want to invest but not uh, stock market uh, this one talking about people who are silent partners example then uh, liability also got non-current or more long-term or current liabilities uh, you have uh, you know expenditures which are long-term and also short-term looks like uh, you know long-term is you know like higher purchase but uh, normally higher purchase of uh, a building is long-term uh, more like 20 years but for uh, when uh, could be seven years or nine years only so but still categorized as long-term liabilities the current liabilities or short-term one uh, all these uh, you know accounts payable uh, uh, don't forget when you take the uh, inventory when you want to buy raw material or whatever material for the manufacturing of the good you also tell the supplier i will you know pay you later pay a little bit or pay every month a little bit uh, so that is accounts payable so that's uh, also comes under current liabilities then uh, of course an example uh, this is the pro forma balance sheet again uh, you know all about uh, uh, prediction uh, uh, presumption so it cannot have like you know up to the few cents all that will be the actual balance sheet but this is uh, financial planning so one interesting thing about balance sheet and that's why they call it balance sheet is uh, you know you look at the total asset uh, after they put together everything uh, it's one three nine nine hundred for the year one and then uh, you uh, put together equity add with the uh, uh, liabilities uh, all the expenditures you will see that the amount will be equivalent to the uh, total assets that means it's balance sheet and it must be balanced or not something went wrong somewhere for the accounts so uh, looks like uh, every year it increased and that's what they project uh, so hopefully uh, it's a good balance sheet and can be also achieved in actual uh, 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 you know actual uh, running of the business later so now we come to the uh, last step you know the step seven is actually performing the uh, financial analysis so once you get the uh, what they say financial statement uh, the pro forma financial statement which uh, encompass uh, the cash flow pro forma cash flow uh, pro forma uh, income statement and then a balance sheet that is you know financial statement then you start to do all this uh, analysis to see whether it is on the right track 
uh, will be in the right track. So, and then they say normally this uh, analysis can be done in ratio analysis. There are other ways as well. I have seen in, you know, the like, uh, database of uh, analysis, there are many ways to actually measure whether your company is doing well or not. But this is one way that is a uh, ratio analysis. So uh, when it comes to these uh, ratios, it is uh, to compare the figures with the uh, what is found in the financial statement and uh, you know getting the ratio so it's a bit of a calculation by selecting uh, what will be preferred for each of that ratio okay? and when it comes to these financial ratios uh, four has been identified here uh, liquidity uh, efficiency profitability as well as solvency you will see within these uh, four there's also a breakdown into um, a different different kind of ratio which uh, you know we will see in a while so in order to for you to understand all these ratios uh, uh, it's best to have an example given first uh, on the uh, income statement as well as uh, in the next slide slide is the balance sheet uh, some of the ratio is actually using these uh, examples so this is another uh, example that is the balance sheet. Uh, please try to recall uh, some of the ratios that I'm going to explain by using these two slides. So let's look into the first of uh, the type of uh, ratios. Uh, this is a liquidity ratio. Uh, so if the person or the entrepreneur is very uh, worried about whether he can pay the monthly bills, so he will use this uh, liquidity ratio okay so although there are many uh, you know there are four types of ratios uh, not necessary for the entrepreneur to uh, gather all the ratio to analyze uh, i can just select uh, for instance this one if the entrepreneur is uh, really obsessed about paying monthly bills got money or not to pay monthly bills so he will do this uh, liquidity ratio and when it comes to liquidity ratio can be broken down to current ratio as well as a quick ratio let's look at what's the meaning of the current ratio and quick ratio so this one is on the current uh, ratio okay and it is calculate, calculated based on taking the total uh, current assets and total current liabilities and it gives an indication about the business ability to generate cash whether there is enough cash to pay all the obligation which is uh, short term not talking about the long term okay and then um, uh, example for year one there is uh, 53,500 and then you divide it by 9,000 all the current liabilities it, the value will be 5.94 and then for the year two, it improved to 7.62 and then uh, also improved later. This uh, uh, sort of like gives an indication uh, the ratio is uh, increasing. But what is the, you know, safe, uh, uh, you know, ratio number? Uh, the safe ratio number, uh, you know, it shouldn't be below one. If uh, below one, that means you know, since the current liability is the denominator at the bottom, that means a lot of expenses rather than the asset that is available. So even if you liquidate, uh, like, you know, sold off everything, cannot pay the liability. Uh, that means when bankrupt, sell all the asset, also cannot pay the utang. Uh, so big problem, right? So they say, uh, you know, cannot have below one and uh, comf comfortable ratio is uh, two and above. So looks like this uh, projection is, you know, uh, more than two. So it's okay. So another type of uh, liquidity ratio is the quick ratio. Uh, and this one is called acid test <laughs> ratio. So uh, let's look into what is that in the next slide uh, by taking an example. So 
So you can see here, it it does not, uh, it removes the inventory because inventory, uh, you know, it, it's stuck in your gudang, uh, stuck in your storage. So it's something that is cannot be uh, immediately uh, uh, changed into cash. Uh, it takes time. So when you want to liquidate, uh, when you want to get money, uh, that will be stuck. So better not take that into account and that's where uh, you know uh, this formula comes in where the inventory is minus stock compared to the ratio we just discussed just now so uh, when you minus 53500 with 7000 and divide by 9000 it's 5.17 uh, but in this company no problem is still increasing therefore it is uh, uh, you know no problem in terms of uh, the comfortable uh, ratio is above one so the uh, when it comes to ratio the third one is uh, efficiency ratio and uh, this one is looking into the inventory uh, whether the inventory is uh, quickly going out or is uh, taking its time in being into sales. Uh, so that can be done by using this uh, efficiency ratio. And uh, looks like uh, one that is uh, widely used is the inventory turnover ratio. So uh, let's look at uh, what is this uh, inventory turnover ratio. So it is uh, calculated uh, the what is that the uh, inventory turnover ratio is calculated based on uh, cost of uh, the sales uh, how much is it to make the uh, goods okay and then uh, average inventory but uh, this calculation of average inventory is not clearly uh, shown here but it has to be about in the last slide you will see it takes into account about uh, beginning of the inventory say early in january then at the end of the inventory taking maybe say december and then you minus off uh, december's inventory with uh, uh, january and then divide by two so that's where you get average inventory so uh, by taking the cost of sales and uh, dividing by average inventory then you get all these uh, figures 32.42 uh, 31.83 and then uh, it's uh, reducing okay uh, the best thing is to actually increasing that when it increases year by year that means the turnover uh, um, uh, when you have the inventory in your gudang then you manage to sell it uh, immediately then the the inventory turnover will be higher number so uh, careful uh, once you calculate it's best to calculate it to be higher every year if it's going to be a pro forma uh, it's a planning uh, you know it's a prediction it's a presumption why you want to think about uh, becoming uh, lower and lower and then keeping the inventory stuck in your storage if you are an entrepreneur who is very optimistic and you know don't want to be always uh, having anxiety looking at the, whether you can pay uh, whether if things go wrong uh, liquidity looking at that ratio or looking at the inventory getting stuck uh, why not look at the profit profitability uh? so this entrepreneur is more interested in uh, very confident can make profit so uh, looks into profitability ratio which is an indicator of business financial uh, performance and then uh, let's look at how it is uh, calculated but before that uh, profitability ratio looks like can be also divided into uh, a, a few of it uh, four i think yeah four uh, gross profit margin net profit margin return on assets and return on equity let's look at each one uh, in a while so uh, concerning about the profit ratio the first one is a uh, gross uh, profit margin and it is calculated by taking the gross uh, profit 
you know uh, what has been uh, profit uh, gross because it's not minusing of more of the expenses uh, even tax included and then the total sales okay so uh, taking the ratio uh, and then uh, you get for uh, 60.59 uh, okay and then 60.56 and then a bit more but this is a good uh, gross profit margin uh, say uh, 100 ringgit uh, 100 ringgit you have uh, obtained you can keep 60 ringgit and 59 cent uh, for yourself uh, while uh, the other part is uh, you know not uh, lost okay uh, and then uh, the following year it increases to 61 ringgit and 56 cents and also increase again in year three so uh, hope you understand by using that analogy that means it is uh, great okay it's worse if you know or, or from 100 ringgit you only get uh, uh, 10 ringgit <laughs> or you know and then from 10 ringgit for year one it will become uh, 9 ringgit and then become five ringgit that means your company is not doing very well in uh, sales okay say uh, you're an entrepreneur some more very meticulous um, very analytical uh, you don't want to look into the gross uh, profit uh, but if you want to use this net profit margin you have to do more calculation on the expenses hopefully uh, all the expenses are already available uh, because some expenses could take time to gather in order to get the net profit uh, gross profit is easier but if you uh, happen to have or you are doing it at the end of the year maybe all is available uh, then this uh, uh, calculation can be done so this one is looking into net profit margin by taking net profit and then divide by sales uh, again we use the analogy uh, so say uh, 100 ringgit after all the uh, net profit margin been calculated uh, get uh, 4 uh, ringgit and 16 cents to be kept final uh, take uh, just no 60 ringgit <laughs> the one is gross uh, but still okay and then you can see it's increasing 8 ringgit and then uh, uh, more so it's on the right uh, direction so this one, uh, another uh, entrepreneur, he's more interested in what he put in uh, uh, based on his investment, uh, the cash, equity. So uh, looking into whether all that is changed into, uh, you know, the land, the plant, uh, machineries, equipment. Is it been uh, utilized uh, effectively in uh, coming up with profit? So can use the return on assets. A calculation or ratio which is net profit uh, divided by total asset and you can see it's also uh, you know in the right uh, direction it's increasing from year one year two to year three so if you want to uh, you know as an entrepreneur you want to put aside on all that uh, asset of machinery uh, you know uh, uh, infrastructure uh, all that you just want to focus on your money that you have invested uh, the equity yeah? it looks like uh, the entrepreneur is giving 129,500 uh, in year one and then increasing it and increasing it every year uh, it will be bad news if this ratio goes downhill but looks like it's increasing okay but uh, again it's increasing but is the net profit, uh, you know, uh, uh, in more than uh, what the total equity put by the owner every year? Uh, that's the thing is missing here. It's not like, you know, it, uh, he puts 188,350 in year two. And he don't go and make like, you know, 258,850. He's still making 58,000 only. So, uh, uh, you, you have to ask the question, uh, put more, get more, but you are putting a lot into it of your money. So by now, uh, you will be like, you know, uh, 
quite confused, got so many types of uh, ratios to actually consider. But, uh, you know, not that you have to uh, uh, calculate all the ratios because too much information also can be confusing. So select uh, and choose what is most suitable. Uh, uh, next one is uh, solvency ratio. Uh, this one is uh, <laughs> looks like uh, if you are very concerned about uh, going into bankruptcy, uh, this is the one that you need to consider because it measures the degree of uh, the risk taken, the financial risk that is uh, uh, his uh, business will face, that means the entrepreneur will face. So uh, it, it uh, looks into the debt, uh, the side of the debt uh, that is uh, going to make it into, you know, perhaps into bankruptcy. So let's look at the uh, calculation of it. Uh, looks like the most common one is total debt uh, to equity. Okay. And then also got two other more, uh, two others. Uh, so let's look at each one uh, in the next slides to come. So this one is uh, total debt to equity and it's calculated with the debt on top and then uh, the equity, all the uh, uh, you know uh, cash in hand or asset uh, by the owner. So uh, based on that, uh, you can see uh, actually it's quite bad. Uh, in the year one, uh, it is uh, a bit imbalanced because it sort of like indicates the debt is a lot more. Uh, than the equity, but uh, luckily uh, the projection is uh, year two and year three improve to actually uh, assisting the equity uh, with debts to be lesser. Okay, but uh, uh, just to uh, stress out that a lot of businesses actually uh, take more debts, uh, uh, pinjaman, uh, uh, you know, credit, take from bank, uh, credit company. Uh, and it's been said for businesses, uh, more uh, credit uh, taken, uh, in a way, it's good for expansion. Uh, so uh, don't get wrong that if uh, debt to equity ratio is a bit of imbalance and more supporting debt, Maybe the company is uh, good at taking, uh, you know, credit and able to expand uh, and uh, generate profit when they expand and pay back. Uh, so that's also must be understood. Then the other one is debt to asset ratio, which uh, focuses on debts and assets. And this also can be calculated and uh, shown near example. And uh, this one is uh, time interest earned, and it is uh, uh, using the profit before interest and tax divided by interest uh, expenses uh, that also been given example here. So we have actually uh, gone through this content for the preparation of financial report. Uh, looks like a lot, uh, and then uh, it cannot be that you do the financial report uh, before doing the admin uh, marketing and promotion uh, budget, it has to be uh, placed at the last because we need feedback from admin marketing and promotional uh, promotion department for preparing this financial report. And then uh, looks like this uh, financial uh, statement, which uh, includes the cash flow income statement balance sheet, is uh, best to be you know. Uh, uh, projected for minimum of three years, at least three years, rather than you know one year. So uh, finally, we come to the end. Uh, so uh, we are to conclude. Yeah, you need to have all this uh, uh, feedback from marketing, operation, uh, and also administrative uh, department. Uh, maybe in service, uh, it may vary in terms of operation. Uh, but still need all feedbacks. And then uh, this financial da data, once it's put together, it, uh, you know, you will know the position of the business, uh, whether it's going to be uh, uh, good, successful, or, you know, will have a lot of challenges. Uh, nobody will uh, plan to have a loss. It's normally all planned to have a profit. 
So it looks like uh, uh, the financial plan covers a lot of things, uh, especially it needs to prepare the pro forma uh, financial statement, which is a uh, uh, cash flow, uh, income statement, and also a balance sheet. Okay. Uh, and also uh, this can then be used to uh, analyze and that is where all the financial ratios comes in and quite a lot but not all need to be uh, you know you can select and use it again and again to determine whether uh, you are in the right track either for the planning or when you already start the business uh, every year or every month you can use all these uh, financial statement and also these uh, ratios to understand where you are in the running of the business.